And I'm keen to find out whether simply washing with soap can stop the spread of germs. I've asked the kids here at Oratia District School to help me demonstrate how easily germs spread and why good hand washing technique is so important. I put a secret substance on my hands and this ball to see how far germs can spread. The kids carried on their normal activities, oblivious to the substance spreading amongst them. And just to make sure, I helped things along a bit. What's your name? Adam. Adam. A special light revealed just how much of the substance the kids picked up. Our small experiment shows how colds and other infections can spread through a population like wildfire. It's made worse by the fact that some viruses can live for up to eight hours on surfaces like doorknobs. Pretend you're dipping your hands into the water. And that's why it's really important kids develop a good hand washing technique. And you're going in circles, rub in circles, and then rub like that. Go scrub, scrub, scrub our nails. We're gonna grab our thumb. Twist, 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 twist. Then the last thing is fingertips and our palms. Dip your hands in your water. When you've all finished, what have we got? Clean hands! Awesome, they look awesome. What do you think about washing your hands? Good idea or a bit of a waste of time? Um, a good idea. They tell me to wash my hands before I eat food. But at home, I just forget about it. I've given soaps a good going over. Now I'm going to look at other types of hand washing products. First we're setting up a trial to test how effective these different products are. We're testing on three types of microbes that cause all sorts of health problems. Campylobacter causes food poisoning and can make people incredibly sick, some people even die. Likewise Salmonella. And Staph aureus causes a range of infections from minor skin problems to life-threatening illnesses like pneumonia. We spread a mixture of each of these organisms onto our brave volunteer's hand. And after each application, he washes with one of the hand cleansers. A bar of soap, an ordinary hand wash, an antibacterial hand wash, a hand sanitizer that doesn't need water, and finally, plain warm water. When we come back later to find out the results, you'll be surprised which product performed the best. Dr Joanna Kerman specialises in infectious diseases, so she's the perfect person to advise us on other hand washing products like the antibacterial cleansers used instead of soap when we're washing with water. The antibacterial soap will have an agent in it that fights bacteria. Triclosan is the most commonly used antibacterial agent that you'll find in a lot of soaps. You can find it even in your toothpaste. But there are some concerns around its use. In the US, the FDA is re-evaluating triclosan. There's concern that it can build up in the environment and interfere with reproduction in animals, not to mention triclosan's potential impact on our health and the threat of antibacterial resistance. Regular use of triclosan could enable some bacteria to build up resistance to it, and that presents us with some potentially big health problems like superbugs. Superbugs are bacteria that are resistant to multiple different antibacterial agents, and that of course is a major concern when they seem to become resistant to pretty much everything and then we've got nothing left to fight them. What's more, antibacterial agents aren't fussy. They'll also kill good bacteria living on our skin. Some bacteria can prevent us from getting the coughs and cold viruses. So having a reasonable number of friendly bacteria is actually a really good thing. So should we be using antibacterial products at all? Generally, if you're a normal healthy person, normal soap is going to be as beneficial to you as using an antibacterial preparation. So how are hand sanitizers different from soaps and antibacterials? Well, they're really for situations where you can't wash your hands, like when you're in the car and you've been handling something dirty. The question is, how do they work? A lot of them are ethanol-based, which is a really, really good broad-spectrum antimicrobial. Ethanol is a type of alcohol. It kills the bugs and then evaporates, so it doesn't stay on the skin, causing damage. There's no major downside to actually using a hand sanitizer other than the fact it's not actually going to clean away the dirt. But on the plus side, hand sanitizers are more effective against viral infections than antibacterial hand washes. During a flu pandemic, for example, they are a great way to try and prevent getting influenza. Time to get the results on the hand wash trial and find out which product performed the best.
all products killed, the Campylobacter Bacta bacteria, including the ordinary bar of soap and washing with just warm water. None of the products tested killed the salmonella, not even the hand sanitizer. Both hand wash products and plain warm water dealt to the staph bugs. Bar soap allowed some to survive, but the hand sanitizer didn't perform well. So what did we learn from our trial of hand washing products? Well, warm water was reasonably effective, the hand sanitizer on its own wasn't, and ordinary soap was as good as an antibacterial hand wash. So what does the industry have to say in response to us finding that the antibacterial performed no better than ordinary soap? There's good evidence where antibacterial soaps do work and have a higher level of efficacy over traditional soaps. And what about the hand sanitizer being the least effective? Hand sanitizers are an alternate to good hand washing, but not a replacement of good hand washing. Coming up, we investigate a potentially serious problem with some exfoliants. That's the stuff that we're potentially just washing down the drain. And do acne products actually work? I didn't have much hope for the big one.